Bhutan, the only country in the world that measures its success not by gross domestic product but by gross national happiness. A unique and profound approach, it's this very concept that shapes the fabric of Bhutanese society, intertwining itself seamlessly into the culture and governance of this awe-inspiring nation. The concept of gross national happiness, or GNH, is not merely an abstract idea but a tangible living principle that guides the Bhutanese way of life. It's an innovative measurement system that evaluates the spiritual, physical, social and environmental health of its citizens and natural environment. This philosophy steers the nation's decision-making process, making Bhutan a global pioneer in the pursuit of collective happiness and well-being. But what does this mean in practice? It means that policies are designed to promote sustainable development, preserve cultural values, conserve the natural environment and establish good governance. In essence, it's a holistic approach to development where the happiness and well-being of the people are placed above all else. Bhutan is often referred to as the Land of the Thunder Dragon, a name that pays homage to the fierce storms that frequently roll in from the Himalayas. The thunderous roars echoing across the valleys and mountains serve as a humbling reminder of nature's power and majesty. But they also symbolize the strength and resilience of the Bhutanese people who have managed to carve out a unique path for themselves amidst the rugged terrain. This small, landlocked country, nestled between India and China, may seem like an unlikely place for such a revolutionary concept. Yet, it's here, in this remote corner of the world, where the idea of measuring success through happiness has taken root, blossoming into a national ethos that continues to inspire and intrigue the world. So as we delve deeper into the wonders of Bhutan, remember this. Bhutan isn't just a country, it's a testament to the human spirit's ability to prioritize happiness over materialistic pursuits. And it's proof that sometimes the most profound wisdom can come from the most unexpected places. In Bhutan, happiness truly is a place. Did you know Bhutan is the only country in the world with a law that requires at least 60% of the land to remain forested for all future generations? An extraordinary commitment, isn't it? This unique law, often referred to as the Forest Law, was born out of Bhutan's deep respect for nature and its understanding of the interconnectedness of all living things. The origins of this law can be traced back to the country's Buddhist principles, which emphasize harmony and balance with nature. This respect for the environment is deeply ingrained in the country's culture and governance, shaping not only its landscape, but also its wildlife. Because of this law, Bhutan boasts an incredibly diverse ecosystem, teeming with rich flora and fauna, some of which are found nowhere else in the world. And it's not just about preserving beauty, this law also contributes to Bhutan's status as a carbon-negative country. That's right, Bhutan absorbs more carbon than it emits. In Bhutan, nature isn't just respected, it's protected by law. Imagine a capital city without a single traffic light. Welcome to Timfu, Bhutan's capital. In most cities around the world, the pulsing glow of red, yellow and green is a common sight. But not here. In this mountain-girdled city, the hum of traffic is directed not by the impersonal glare of traffic lights, but by the elegant dance of traffic policemen stationed at key junctions. Now you might be thinking, surely they must have tried traffic lights at some point, right? And you'd be correct. In the early 2000s, Thimphu did indeed dip its toes into the world of traffic lights. The city installed its first set but the residents, well, they didn't quite take to it. The traffic lights were seen as an impersonal intrusion into the city's rhythm, a jarring note in the harmonious symphony of Thim Phu's daily life. The mechanized dictates of red and green were a far cry from the human touch of the city's traffic policemen with their white gloves and choreographed movements. So, in a decision that speaks volumes about Bhutan's commitment to its unique cultural identity, the traffic lights were removed. Today, the city's traffic policemen continue to direct the flow of cars and pedestrians alike. Their balletic gestures, a unique blend of authority and grace, are a sight to behold. They stand in small, ornate pavilions, adding an element of charm to the city's streets. Timfu's approach to managing traffic is a testament to Bhutan's broader philosophy. Here, tradition and modernity are not adversaries, but partners. The city's refusal to bow to the convention of traffic lights is a reflection of its commitment to preserve its cultural heritage, even in the face of modernization. So next time you find yourself waiting impatiently at a red light, spare a thought for the residents of Thimphu. In this serene capital, even the traffic 
flows in its unique unhurried way. In Thimphu, even the traffic flows in its unique unhurried way. In Bhutan, archery isn't just a sport, it's a national obsession. The passion for archery resonates in every corner of this Himalayan kingdom where it's celebrated as the national sport. Imagine a game of archery, but not like the quiet, focused events you might be used to. Bhutanese archery is a vibrant, lively affair that brings together entire communities. It's a spectacle of colorful outfits, robust laughter and friendly rivalry, all set against the stunning backdrop of Bhutan's lush landscapes. The importance of archery in Bhutan transcends sport. It's a social event, a community gathering and a vibrant display of Bhutanese culture. Matches are often accompanied by traditional rituals and ceremonies, adding a spiritual dimension to the game. The archery range in Bhutan is a stage where traditions come alive. Participants donned in traditional dress, known as Go, take their positions, bows in hand. The target, set at a challenging distance of nearly 140 meters, is not an easy feat, but for these archers, hitting the target is a matter of skill, precision, and a deep-rooted understanding of their ancestral sport. It's not just about the archers, though. On the sidelines, spectators become an integral part of the event. They cheer, they tease, they indulge in good-natured banter. Families, friends, neighbors, everyone becomes a part of the celebration. The atmosphere is electric, filled with singing, dancing, and the echoes of shared joy and camaraderie. In Bhutan, archery is also a testament to the country's commitment to preserving its cultural heritage. The sport is a symbol of Bhutanese identity and pride. In a world that's rapidly modernizing, Bhutan's love for archery is a reminder of the country's steadfast dedication to its roots. So, next time you think of archery, remember Bhutan, where archery isn't merely a sport, it's a celebration, a community event, a cultural showcase, and so much more. It's where every arrow that's launched isn't just aimed at a target, but towards preserving a rich cultural heritage. In Bhutan, archery hits the bullseye of cultural tradition. In a country where animals are considered sacred, Bhutan is home to the Takin, a unique and rare creature believed to be created by a divine madman. Let's delve into that a bit, shall we, in the heart of Bhutan, where the air is fresh with the scent of pine and the sound of gushing rivers echoes through the valleys, roams the Takin. This fascinating creature with its shaggy golden coat, a face reminiscent of a wildebeest and a body akin to a cow, it's no wonder the locals fondly refer to it as Dong Yemtse, translating to field goat cattle. The story of its creation is as unique as the creature itself, legend has it, the 15th century saint. Drukpa Kunli, who was lovingly known as the divine madman due to his unorthodox methods of teaching Buddhism, created this creature. Invited to a large feast, he was asked to perform a miracle. After consuming an entire cow and a goat, he stuck the goat's head onto the bones of the cow. And voila, the Takin was born. Today, the Takin is more than just a peculiar creature roaming the Bhutanese landscape. It is a national symbol, proudly represented on various insignia and emblems, and even has a sanctuary dedicated to its preservation, the Motithang Takin Preserve, situated in the capital city of Thimphu. But the Takin isn't the only creature revered in Bhutan. In this kingdom where Buddhism permeates every aspect of life, all life forms are respected and cherished. From the black-necked cranes that grace the Pobjikar Valley to the elusive snow leopards lurking in the snowy peaks of the Himalayas, each creature is considered sacred, their lives intertwined with the spiritual beliefs and practices of the Bhutanese people. In Bhutan, even the animals have tales that are part legend, part mystery, and entirely fascinating. So, the next time you find yourself in this mystical kingdom, remember, you're in a land where animals are not just part of the natural world, but a significant part of the cultural narrative as well. From a country that measures its success by happiness, to a capital without traffic lights, to a unique national sport and sacred animals, Bhutan is truly a land of fascinating facts. With its enchanting nickname, the Land of the Thunder Dragon, Bhutan intrigues from the very start. Its unique law prioritizes gross national happiness over gross domestic product, proving that joy triumphs over material wealth. Bhutan's capital, Thimphu, defies the norms with a complete absence of traffic lights, a testament to the country's commitment to simplicity and harmony. The national sport, archery, is more than a game. It's a cultural cornerstone that symbolizes Bhutan's history and traditions. 
and let's not forget the sacred animals that roam freely adding to Bhutan's mystical allure. Bhutan, a small country with big stories where every corner has a tale to tell, a land that leaves a lasting impression on the heart and soul of every visitor.